It's time to reveal my identity. I'm the manifestation of tens of millions of centuries of sexual selection. Best believe I'm the best of the best of the best of the best of generations of competitive pressure genetically. But don't get upset, because we got the same pedigree. You and I will find a common ancestor eventually if we rewind geological time regressively. And I could say the same for this hibiscus tree, and this lizard, and this flea, and this sesame seed. And if you still disbelieve in what your senses perceive, I could even use my rhyme as a remedy. Yeah? How you guys doing out there? Make some noise, DLD conference. We're still waiting for the sound to get going here, but we, we have a signal, yeah? All right. Here's how this one goes. The first man on this planet to translate his amazement at the wonder of life into a way to explain it was Charles Darwin. So this is a celebration of Darwin's greatness in the form of a rap. Some would say a debasement. I would say be patient. Okay, so how do you go from amoebas to rappers? You open the origin of species and you read his chapters. You're gonna find about the impact of people's actions on farm animals, ducks, cows, dogs, domestic crops. You know, they had wild ancestors, but somehow they went soft. Kind of like underground rappers going pop. Like for instance, in West Africa around 7,000 BC, humans domesticated black-eyed peas. But don't call it a sellout, please. Those black-eyed peas have a lot of mouths to feed. They're wild cousins, well they just watch from the weeds. See, there is nothing artificial about domestication. Ant colonies keep domestic aphids. It's an arrangement where one hand washes the other. We protect the cow, and the cow offers the udder. And that's how we get a mouthful of butter. But in the wild, that cow is just not gonna cut it. But think about it for a second. If our little selections and little preferences can change and enhance the critical differences between wild and domestic breeds over the centuries, maybe that could explain everything. I mean, in nature, instead of us making selections, it's survival and reproduction in the midst of competition where slight differences that arise randomly get selected by the pressures applied environmentally and eventually species divide like a family tree into everything alive from a fly to a manatee okay so how does this apply to this rap the craft of the mc well they say evolution is an algorithm it only has three parts variation selection and heritability so let's see if we can find all three in rap music all right so variation can be found in the styles on display i mean rappers all have different techniques when they're on stage and the results can be seen in the audience's face like for instance at this moment you guys all look amazed like guppies removed abruptly from your aquatic space your minds are probably racing over questions of style and race and genre and time and place and some of your eyes are glazed like for god's sake how long will this take but if you all feel that way then soon i'll be replaced by someone more entertaining like maybe little wayne then again, if enough people just like you choose to plant my seed, you might turn me into a black-eyed pea. See, you're like ancient breeders. You're rearranging the features of a species of sheep. You're increasing the sweetness of your peaches every season when you choose to seed it or to feed it or to breed it or to weed it out and delete it because you just don't see it as needed. The preferences in question could be for bigger chicken breasts or whippets with a thinner midsection or it could be an inner predilection to pick the best in any, mi in any mixed collection. They call that our artificial selection. People, you are like farmers. That's how it is. You can't opt out of it. You have no choice but to make choices. You're helpless. It's kind of like the rap version of the doctrine of Malthus. Thomas Malthus on population. It goes like this. It's a simple algorithm. One, two, three. Too many MCs, not enough mics. See, that's the proportion of hungry mouths, that's the too many MCs, compared to food resources in the form of captive audiences, which is the not enough mics, because crowds of two or more will always be at least half as common as performers.
cameras, right? I mean, there's too Ooh, many MCs. MCs. Can you guys see the mathematical problem? It creates a little shortage. Now there's not, not enough, enough mics. mics. But survival on stage, that's a non-random process. Because those who get massive responses, they tend to influence those who aspire to get massive responses. So if you say I sound like an Eminem ripoff, then I'll probably get pissed off and start flipping you off and acting obnoxious and screaming, nah, dog, that's preposterous. Okay, I'm gonna admit it. What you're watching is a form of imitation modified by experience, which is kind of similar to the genetic basis of inheritance, that's heritability, except it's part Darwinism and part Lamarckism with genes and culture co-evolving as we rock to the rhythm. But whether you think cultures really evolve, or if it's just a silly metaphor that's pretty but false, or whether you've never even thought about that, I still think Darwin can teach us all about rap, because it's all about that competition for status with intricate language delivered in battles, and it's all about getting that fitness advantage and the different adaptive behavior patterns that have us acting crazier than pheasants mating dances. But hey, that's natural selection. So just sit back and listen, and you'll witness the evolution of the rap profession. Blah. The patterns that I'm here to talk about that I see connecting are between hip-hop culture and Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. One of the deepest connections between them is the concept of Afrocentricity. So here we have Dead Prez, one of the main Afrocentric rappers, and they have a song, it's a classic, it's called I'm a African. I'm a African. When they wrote the song I'm a African, they were not writing about evolution, they were writing about revolution. They performed this song in nightclubs, basically places that look exactly the opposite of where we are right now. And when they do it, they do a call and response thing with the crowd. They go, yo, I'm an African. And the crowd goes back, I'm, I'm an African. African. And if you look real close, you'll see the crowd's full of white kids, Asian kids, Hispanic people, Jewish people, multiracial. Of course, this is deeply ironic because Darwin teaches us that all human beings alive on the planet today have ancestors that lived in Africa. We are all African under the skin, right? You only have to go back about 60,000 years before we all have ancestors there. So really, Dead Prez, they were attempting to write a politically and racially exclusive rap song, but they unintentionally wrote the most inclusive song ever written in history. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat this like a folk song from the homelands, all of us African expats in the house, and we're going to sing it together today. Some of you look a little tense. <laughs> That's all right, just think of this as a social experiment. I'll start it off, all right? I'm gonna say, I'm an African! And when I say it, part of your brain is inevitably gonna go, oh my God, he's clearly white, that's totally wrong. But another part of your brain is gonna go, wait a minute, he does have a point. And that second part's gonna overcome, that's the rational part. And then you're gonna shout, I'm an African! Back to me with just as much zeal, because you're gonna feel it deep in your DNA. All right? Let's try this out. Don't leave me hanging, all right? I'm an African. Say it loud if you know what's happening. Come on, louder. I'm an African. Hell yeah, so I know what's happening. Awesome. Let's do this. Of course, the next challenge is going to be for all of us quote unquote Africans to sing the song on beat. Here it comes. Remember, it's I'm a African, not I'm an African. You drop the head. Grammatically incorrect. You guys ready? I'm an African. I'm an African. Hell yeah, and I know what's happening. I'm an African. I'm an African. Your archaeologist copy what's happening. Are you an African? I'm an African. Then say it loud if you know what's happening. I'm an African. I'm an African. Yeah, geneticists know what's happening. No, I wasn't born in Ghana, but Africa is my mama. Cause that's where my mama got her mitochondria. You can try to fight if you want to, but it's not gonna change me. It's plain to see. Africans are my people. And if it's not plain to see, then your eyes deceive you. I'm talking primeval. The DNA in my veins tells a story that reasonable people find believable. But it might even blow your transistors. 
Africa is the home of our most recent common ancestors, which means human beings are all brothers and sisters. To check the massive evidence of Homo erectus and Australopithecus afarensis in the fossil record, and then try to tell me that we're not all connected. The fossil record has gaps, but no contradictions, and it complements the evidence in your chromosomes. So I came to let you know about your ancestral home. I'm an African. I'm an African. Oh yeah, so you know what's happening. I'm an African. I'm an African. So say it loud if you know what's happening. Are you an African? I'm an African. Yeah, geneticist, tell me what's happening. I'm an African. I'm an African. Archaeologists know what's happening. And every human on this planet is an African. So everybody needs to know what's happening. Spread the word. There are many, many other deep patterns that connect between hip hop culture and evolutionary biology, of course. I could get into a lot more. This is an excerpt from an hour and a half long show, but I'm just gonna give you a quick little tour. Of course, the idea that humans came from Africa, a pattern that connects us all, came from the descent of man, also the origins of sexual selection theory, the idea that organisms could develop ornaments purely for the purpose of attracting mates. Classic example is the peacock's tail. Lesser known example is the modern phenomenon of bling found in hip hop culture. But there's an idea that maybe all hip hop is bling that I've been trying to explore. I've been hearing that message from hip hop culture since I was very young. First time I heard it, I was 11 years old and it was coming from a rapper called Slick Rick. Ricky, 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 can't you see? Somehow your words just hypnotize. See, Slick Rick observes that his words have a hypnotic effect on female brains. I figure a peacock could have written that song. A few years later, I heard that exact same message again, only this time it had mutated. I was 15, and the message was coming from Snoop. Doggy, 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 can't you see? Somehow your words just hypnotize. I detect a pattern. Of course, the Notorious B.I.G. did his own version of that song, and I did a remix of it as well, but I'm not gonna get into all this. You can find videos based on the Rap Guide to Evolution online, and, I, and you can check us out as well. We got one final piece to share with you tonight. It's called Performance Feedback Revision. <laughs> So when I first started writing these evolution raps a couple of years ago, early drafts of the lyrics were not this complex. Early drafts were simple. They started out kind of like this. Yo, yo, the origin of species. Ain't no feces, dog, believe me. What? And that was all I could think of. So then I was like, wow, these lyrics really need to be rewritten. And sometimes people ask me, how does the show get written? Like this, performance, feedback, revision. And how do I generally develop my lyricism? Like this, performance, feedback, revision. And how do human beings ever learn to do anything? Same way, performance, feedback, revision. And evolution is really just kind of an algorithm that goes like this, performance, feedback, revision. So the genetic code of every living thing was also written like this, performance, feedback, revision. See, the genes are like a text with 100,000 pages, and the revisions occur in the little random changes that come from mutations. And when they see the light, well that's the performance. That's the phenotype. And then natural selection, well that's the feedback side. That's about who survives and whose genes catch rides in the next generation. Yes, what I'm saying is that a rap performance like this is the best illustration for the way that descent with modification works. Because the performance is necessary to change the words, to decide which have an impact and which to send back to the drawing board. In fact, I just did that when you guys failed to react. Because any line can change, and the mutations occur when I improvise on stage. Because up until this moment, everything I said was off the page. Now I'm gonna have to switch it up and do a freestyle section. I'll have to keep it specific so I can beat your cheater detection. Yeah, all right, I'm improvising. I got flow, especially for all of the billionaires in the front row. Yeah, see, I'm dropping the wisdom. This is a freestyle, where are we at? Entrepreneurialism. I'm trying to make you people feel me. How you guys doing out there at DLD? I'm just making it out as I go along. I'm flowing on this beat right now. I don't know this song because I never wrote it before. I'm just trying to be a motor mouth and be a digitally hardcore. But even if I make a little mistake over the rhythm, that's okay. That's how I introduce randomness into the system. See, that's mutations. I get it from freestyling. I gotta thank you for the invitation, Esther Dyson. Yeah, because she's a... Uh, 
from one of those families It's not exactly just, it's not exactly dysfunctional But um, it is culturally, massively making an impact Yeah, I kick raps, maybe sick attacks This is the way that I spit it, I make it just interact Yes, I'm never a deadbeat This was my first time doing a hip-hop show with Prezi Yeah, see, this is the way I put it down I was like, how does this work? And the CEO was in the speaker's lounge Ha, that's why I love DLD You can make those connections This is freestyle rap, improvisational introspection It's like live improv that I'm doing this hip-hop I can do this, I rock the music I'm totally jet-lagged cause I just touched down in Munich Yeah, it's how it go though Ah, my mouth is a motor She's telling me right now I gotta get off the stage and give it up for the coders <laughs> It's like an explosion. Yeah, that's right. I do it impressively, but not as impressively as Steffi. So give it her up for her, people. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. DLD, DLD. DLD, everybody, DLD, 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 DLD. Good. Thank A little you injection much. of rap never hurt anybody. <laughs> thank you guys so much. One time for Mr. Simmons on the turntables. Thank you.